everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Military Pigskin, presented by Navy Federal Credit Union. For our members are the mission, Frank Frangie, Ian Shields. Final show of the year. I mean, that was fast, wasn't it? Yeah, it went by so fast, and it's the, it's the best time of the year, football season. Uh, we still have a couple games left down here the stretch, and we're excited for the finish of this 18 season. Ian, we're going to recap some teams here, but a team like Navy that's got to get relevant again, a team like Army that's got to kind of stay relevant, which, which is a harder challenge? Well, they're both challenges, and it's always hard. It's hard to win a college football game and have a winning season. Certainly, Army's had the upper hand this season. Um, but again, there's a few games here down the stretch that, 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 that will uh, tell the tale. All right. Well, we're certainly going to start with a team that is trying to stay relevant, not one that's trying to become relevant, and that's the Army Black Knights. What a terrific season for this Army football team. Jeff Munkin is proud, and he ought to be proud. A magnificent season for Army, one of the best in many, many decades for that terrific football program. How good? Well, I'm going to show you how good. How about this, Ian? Army is in the back-to-back -back weeks in the top 25, first time since 1996 that that has happened. By the way, that year they were ranked uh, for the last five weeks and finished 25th overall. But what a terrific year for this uh, Army football team. I got to tell you, and, and, and I know it's near and dear to your heart. You, you're a guy that has been at Army uh, five years as the offensive coordinator. I know how much you loved your years at West Point. You're not there now, but you've got to be awfully proud of that, don't you? Well, I am, and there's a couple guys still playing for him that, that our staff recruited and uh, helped that turnaround with Coach Monk. And Coach Monk's staff done a wonderful job there moving that program forward. Again, ranked in the top 25 in a, a historic season, not just this year, but going back to last year. And again, you go back to winning the Commander-in-Chief trophy two years in a row. Uh, that's stuff that has never been done there. So again, uh, in some point in time, they'll be building a statue. All right, well, that terrific running back, <laughs> Donnell Wolfolk, a big reason why they're so good, but he knows it's not just about getting ranked, it's about staying there. I really think I'm more proud of my team and how uh, everybody works together for a common goal. And uh, I, think, I think we're working towards it every day. Obviously, every, every team in the nation wants to be in the top 25, but uh, our goal now is uh, to stay there. Um, we don't want to just make the top 25, we want to finish in the top 25. All right, before long, we'll know uh, bowl possibilities for this terrific uh, Army football team. Service Academy teams don't always get to bowls. Even with the proliferation of bowls, and more and more do, it's still special to get to that postseason event, isn't it? It's very special. It's a reward uh, to those you know, cadets at Army to get to a bowl and spend time as a football family away at, at some point. And it'll be interesting to see where they end up, whether it's in Fort Worth or San Francisco or somewhere. Army is going to travel well. We know that. They have a national following, a worldwide following, as we well know. I think that's been a very attractive team to a lot of bulls out there right now. We'll find out on Sunday. Yeah, let's take a look and see, give an idea of where, uh, where this Army team could wind up. Here's a look at uh, the possibilities. The Armed Forces Bulls you just talked about, Fort Worth. Uh, if they play there on December 22nd, good teams. SMU Cincinnati who is a very good team. Nevada, Boise State. There's an outside possibility they could wind up in San Francisco, and if they do there, uh, go there, they could play Utah, obviously out of the Pac-12, so possibility of playing some pretty good football teams, right? Yeah, all those teams above uh, will be a challenge. It's going to be great contests, great matchups, highly anticipated, and I think there'll be a, uh, a lot of people tuning in their televisions to watch any of those matchups. All right, one thing for sure, Jeff Munkin knows this. When you go bowling and you've got it rolling, it's not a vacation. It's an opportunity to keep it going. Probably an Im impossible uh, feat is to play absolutely perfect, but if we don't shoot for that, perfect in our fun fundamentals and perfect in the execution of our assignments and, and all those things, then we'll be well short of it. It is neat that this team's going to play on it, and I, Munkin's got his right. You don't want to just take a vacation. You want to go win that bowl game. What's it like for Jeff being able to take this team to that bowl game? I think there's two things. One, it, it's a celebration of a great season, so you want to enjoy it with your current team and send your seniors out with another victory, hopefully. The part two of that, though, is it's developmental. All those young guys getting to keep practicing. The teams that aren't bowling are staying at home watching. So the teams that are going to bowls have a real, real uh, advantage in the development of their program moving forward with the young kids. Well, you mentioned those seniors. Jeff Munkin knows what a special class this was. I, I can't say enough about these guys. I, I, I could talk about each one of them individually for a good while and, uh, and would enjoy having the opportunity to do that because they're all great guys. But um, you know, this class has completely changed the, the course of this program.
program. Man, I love hearing Jeff Munkin talk about his senior. You coaches are proud of your seniors, aren't you? Oh, you are. You love them. And then there at West Point, you have total admiration and respect for them for who they are, what they've done, and certainly on the football side, what they've accomplished. All right. Uh, terrific senior class. Terrific year for Army. Now, to find out more about Army, as always, we welcome in the third member of our team, our friend Lauren Brooks. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Frank. You can't have the season the Black Knights are having without great leadership. Zach Daly has more in West Point on Army's senior captains. Thanks, Lauren. One word you're going to hear the Army Black Knights talking about a lot when they talk about this team and this program is the Army Football Brotherhood. Now, a lot of these players, including Bryce Holland, fifth-year senior center captain on this team and junior linebacker and other captain, Cole Christensen, they'll talk about a lot of memories of this brotherhood, some of the games they've played and some of the friends they've made along the way that are going to last them a lifetime. You know, the 2016 Army-Navy game was uh, unreal, you know, getting that first win. Uh, we hadn't had that for, for years, and so that was extremely exciting. And then, um, obviously, last year, winning the CIC, uh, shutting out Air Force. Um, amazing experience, bringing that CIC trophy back home. You know, there's been a lot of amazing experiences uh, since I've been here. Meeting my best friends on the team has been my, my favorite moments, spending time with them, because we're here all year, obviously. I mean, we don't ever really get to go home, so I've become so close with those guys, and every opportunity I get to go play on the field with them is my favorite moment. The biggest thing is just um, setting up the future for you know our teammates that are behind us, um, the class 2020, you know, the, um, the cows, the yucks, and the plebes coming up. Um, just, you know, setting the groundwork um, you know, that was that was set for us by the 2018 class, the 2017 class. Um, just setting the ground groundwork for continued success for this program. Now, the Black Knights have a lot of memories from this year. They're 9-2. and two. They're bowl eligible for the third year in a row. They're nationally ranked in two of the three major college football polls. And on Sunday, they find out their fate for a bowl game. I'm Zach Daly for Inside Military Pigskin. Thanks, Zach. I'm excited now to be joined by Mary Tobin, who went to West Point and served for 10 years in the Army after that. Mary, thanks so much for joining us today and for your service. Thank you for having me. How did you decide that West Point was the right school for you? Well, when I was younger, I was in junior ROTC. I'm born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and the ROTC bug bit me, and I thought I wanted to be Colin Powell. And so in order to be Colin Powell, you have to go to the best leadership school in the world. So I chose West Point. Now, what actually made me stay at West Point was the family, the camaraderie, and the understanding that I was a part of something bigger than myself. What sports did you participate, participate in when at West Point? A little bit of everything, uh, a lot of intramural sports. So basketball, which is my first love in life, uh, did equestrian, volleyball, you name it. I think I might have tried my hand on lacrosse, got hit in the face with a ball and decided, no, this is not <laughs> what I want to do. Um, and then eventually settled on just being a great leader. So yeah. now you are a Chief Operations Officer yeah. at the Kids Hope Alliance in Jacksonville, Florida. How did your military background prepare you for your current career? Absolutely. So I went to Iraq. I deployed to Iraq about six months after graduating from West Point. And so I was 23 years old, leading a platoon of men, 50 men, in war. Uh, what that taught me immediately was to, one, trust my leadership instincts, um, two, to always take care of the men and women that um, so diligently follow me, to respect the people that I'm serving and helping in these various countries, um, but to always understand that um, doing my best and never quitting when I have a mission is most important. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, thank you for your service. Yeah, thank that you. is a young age to be deployed. It is. <laughs> what would you like to say to the men and women out there, the servicemen and women out there watching on the American Forces Television Network? Absolutely. First of all, I want to thank you for your continued sacrifices and commitment. I know what it's like to be away from your family and friends during the holidays. So you are amazing. I'll also say that you are less, you are part of less than 1% of the people who are doing what you're doing. So you are heroes in my eyes. I hope that you stay safe and everybody come back home. Mary, that was wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much again yeah. for joining us today. Thank you. And thanks, of course, with, for your work with the Kids Hope Alliance in Jacksonville. Thank you Florida. so much for your support. Absolutely. When we come back, we're going to check in with the Falcons. That is next on Inside Military Pigskin. Inside Military Pigskin is presented by Navy Federal Credit Union, proudly serving the armed forces, veterans, and their families for over 85 years. Insured by NCUA. The United States Military Academy educates, trains, and inspires young men and women to become leaders of character, committed to the values of duty, honor, country, and there's so much more. Ranked among America's top schools, more than 35 majors, high-tech facilities, 
hands-on experiences, leadership, history, tradition, West Point, America's Academy. What's the day like at the Academy? Get up. Get ready. Eat breakfast. Drill. Learn. Learn. Play. 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 Drill. Study. 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 Eat dinner. And study. Go to bed. Get up. Do it again. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? The U.S. Coast Guard Academy. Honor. Respect. Devotion to duty. Apply today. Here, I test my limits. Here, I find my purpose. Here, I attend a top-ranked school and am taught by the best. Here, I am part of something bigger than myself. Here, at the United States Naval Academy, we wear the Navy blue and gold. There is nothing average about the Air Force Academy or those who come here. It takes more than smart and good grades. It takes grit. It's for the I never quit students, the relentless, persevering, most likely to keep trying until I reach my best students. Because we will go on to lead others, push boundaries, save lives, and represent American ideals. If you've got what it takes, prove it. Welcome back to Inside Military Pigskin, presented by Navy Federal Credit Union, where our members are the mission. For more on the Falcons' big win over Colorado State, here's Frank and Ian. All right, thank you, Laura, and it was a big win, 27-19. It was a rivalry game, uh, and they needed to win that game. We'll talk a little bit about it in a second, but this is Troy Calhoun. I like him. How's he? You know all these guys. Yeah. What's Troy Calhoun like? How's he different than Jeff Munkin a little bit? Well, he's got an interesting background. He's done a tremendous job at Air Force, but he's also coached in the NFL. And I said of all the academies, just systematically, they're the most offensively, certainly the most diverse, the most spread out, and traditionally done the best job distributing the ball through the air. So he has a little different philosophy, and that probably goes back to where he went to high school, at Roseburg High School in Roseburg, Oregon, way back in the day. Um, I know his roots well. He's a heck of a football coach. You guys are both Oregon. That's a couple of Oregon. That's Oregon talking about Oregon right there. I hear you. The uh, – uh, let's talk a little bit about this Air Force football season. They had a good year. They had a good finish. Uh, not headed to a bowl game. It certainly had a terrific finish. Uh, and you need to finish strong, and they did. We'll talk about uh, why they played so well in a minute. But, Ian, it's important to finish strong, right? No matter what happens throughout the course of the year, you remember the last one, right? Yeah, you do, and it's always nice to take that W into the offseason, and especially in a rival game, beating Colorado State. That was a huge victory for, for Coach Munkin and the, and the – I mean, excuse me, for Coach Calhoun. Excuse me, wrong academy. For Coach Calhoun and the Falcons. So, again, nice way to finish. It's disappointing they're not making a bowl this year. They're, that, they're on the razor's edge and really close. They'll, they'll have a chance next year. Yeah, and one thing that will help them is a terrific running back named Cole Fagan. How about this? 34 rushes, 260 yards. That's the third most in a game in the history of Air Force football, most ever by a fullback. He never had more than 116 yards at one time against Wyoming. What a terrific game for Cole Fagan. He's an underclassman. He's coming back. Boy, that's a boost for him, wasn't it? Well, there's no question. I mean, 34 carries, 260-some yards. I mean, that's a career day, obviously. And that's a great... You know, that's a great place to start is up the middle. I mean, all those runs in between the tackles for 260 yards. Tough day for Colorado State. You don't stop the fullback. Fagan was asked about it after the game. He, he's really mm -hmm. still kind of surprised it happened. I, I, I still like looking at the numbers. I don't believe it a little bit. So, Did you ever, even in high school, have a, a breakout game like this? No. no. <laughs> Do you know your career high in high school? No, it wasn't even 100. <laughs> so... <laughs> You talked a moment ago about Troy Calhoun. He's an emotional guy. There's no question about that. And he was emotional after this because he knows how hard it is just to play football at Air Force. I mean, just the amount of investment that goes, uh, even, even getting to the point where you even get to be an Air Force football player, let alone play, uh, what's required for a, uh, for a student athlete, for a cadet here, uh, is pretty exceptional in terms of the commitment and the dedication they have to have. He made a really good point. Look, college football is hard anywhere, Ian. You know that. But it's harder at the military academies because of everything you've got to do. They're not getting their resumes ready to go work for an accounting firm. They're getting ready to go defend the country. They are. And 
it's not the civilian life. They've chosen a harder path. They've taken on more than the, the average college student has or the average uh, college student athlete certainly has. Again, there's not an easy path. That's why we respect these young men so much for the path they're on and not only what they're doing playing Division One football and the great academic institutions at all the academies, but what they're going to do beyond that at the next level. All right, we have talked Army and Air Force. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk Navy football. That's up next after this on Inside Military Pixie. There is nothing average about the Air Force Academy or those who come here. It takes more than smart and good grades. It takes grit. It's for the I never quit students, the relentless, persevering, most likely to keep trying until I reach my best students. Because we will go on to lead others, push boundaries, save lives, and represent American ideals. If you've got what it takes, prove it. The United States Military Academy educates, trains, and inspires young men and women to become leaders of character, committed to the values of duty, honor, country, and there's so much more. Ranked among America's top schools, more than 35 majors, high-tech facilities, hands-on experiences, leadership, history, tradition, West Point, America's Academy. What's the day like at the academy? Get up. Get ready. Eat breakfast. Drill. Learn. Learn. Play. 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 Drill. Study. 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 Eat dinner. And study. Go to bed. Get up. Do it again. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? The U.S. Coast Guard Academy. Honor, respect, devotion to duty. Apply today. Here, I test my limits. Here, I find my purpose. Here, I attend a top-ranked school and am taught by the best. Here, I am part of something bigger than myself. Here, at the United States Naval Academy, we wear the Navy Blue and Gold. It felt good to just feel like everything clicked, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's how it seemed. It seemed like everything, you know, we still were messing up here and there, but no game's ever going to be perfect. Um, but it was, it felt good. Anthony Gargiulo is right. They played better offensively, and good for them for doing so. Welcome back, everyone, to Inside Military Pigs and Frank Frangie and Ian Shields. Um, Navy did not have the season they wanted or have it to this point, but certainly they started to find themselves at least a little bit offensively. Ian, I do get the sense that. Defense is struggling a little bit. Offense is good as it's looked in a while. Yeah, they've, they've gotten better. I think they've established their identity in, in a rhythm now with uh, Zach Abia at quarterback and Malcolm Perry at slot and then using him a bunch of different ways. And they're playing better football because of it. All right, take a little look at uh, how it looked. Uh, 204 yards passing. That's the most they've had all year. Zach Abia's playing well at quarterback. He's 7 out of 13 for 161 yards. Um, he also caught a touchdown pass, by the way, from Malcolm Perry. Those two guys uh, together <laughs> are playing very, very well. Uh, they were good on fourth down as well. So uh, certainly uh, they played well together, uh, A.B. and Perry. Navy finally started to find itself uh, offensively. Look, when you run that offense, you gotta, it affects everything. It affects your defense. It affects your special teams because you're conditioned to hold the ball for a while, and that's what they sort of did, right? They did, and they, again, they played well offensively. They, I bet they wish they had hold on about another minute and 20 seconds there in the fourth quarter. But Zach Avey gives him a great chance to win. He's a dual threat. I should say triple threat. He caught a touchdown pass. He runs it. He operates beautifully. And then Perry, again, is one of the more dynamic playmakers in academy football, and they're getting him involved a bunch of ways. How hard is it when you've coached long enough, you've had good years and bad years, how hard is this for that Navy staff and for the middies to go through a year like this. Now, I know it's been a tough few years there, but there was so much success before that. How hard is this for them to deal with this? Extremely difficult, painful, because uh, you put so much into it, and it's such a prideful program and such a great history there, and, and you feel like you're letting people down uh, that care so much. So again, they got a chance. They have one more game left in their season, and then they'll have a chance to regroup and then go into, go into next season, guns a-blazing. Well, I know this much, uh, when you lose some games, there's pressure. There's pressure on everybody. There's pressure on the coaches. Offensive coordinator Ivan Jasper, though, says that comes with the territory. It's a week-to-week -week deal. Um, you know, when you're winning, everybody loves you. When you're losing, 
you know, everybody's writing letters and sending in emails. Right, it's, it's, right. it's the nature of the business. You know, we understand that. You know, don't let it bother us. We just got to try to find a way to help these kids win football games. Now, for these Navy seniors, we talk about seniors and how, how difficult it is for seniors from the service academies as they move on. Well, 16 of these Navy seniors have chosen to move on to the Marines. That's a tough challenge, isn't it? Well, it's the ultimate challenge. Uh, when, you, when you branch the Marines, as, as is the option at the Naval Academy, uh, you're going right to the tip of the spear. And uh, what, a, what a tremendous amount of respect and uh, gratitude we owe those guys for, for choosing that challenge. And it's not a surprise that football players who are close feel this way. In fact, the Navy players will tell you it's all about a brotherhood. It's something I wanted to do coming in here and uh, just seeing all, a lot of my brothers from the Brotherhood uh, choose Marine Corps on the team uh, really influenced me and just the summer trainings, um, you know, just seeing guys uh, in Quantico that are still there doing trainings and stuff, um, you know, I, I just think it's a really equivalent to uh, Navy football. They're kind of telling us all the, the, the close relations between the Marine Corps and football mm -hmm. and it kind of, I mean, made, made most sense when we were down there, like everything was making sense that like you work as a team, like everything we learned on the football field we can implement in the Marine Corps. Now it's going to be tough sledding, no question about it, but a number of these seniors have already been through a week of leatherneck training at Quantico just to get a feel for it. Anthony Garzulo said it wasn't exactly club med. The woods wasn't the bad part, it was just the long distance running and the, you know, not having a nice Italian meal ready for you after the field. Um, <laughs> they give you sea rations? Yeah, yeah, it was stuff you had to cook in a bag and <laughs> some dried up crackers, but it was, it was a good time, you know, it was a lot of fun, uh, especially because it rained the entire time we were out there. Leatherneck training, wow, I couldn't handle it. You might, you're a tough guy, could you handle leatherneck training? No, <laughs> no, those guys are the, the toughest of the tough, you know, and, and uh, you got what, 16 football players from the Naval Academy choosing, choosing that as their, as their next step. Um, just all the respect in the world for those guys. And, I, and, it, and without a doubt, there's no question. <laughs> and congratulations to those guys who have chosen that. Le Lauren Brooks, by the way, is, more, is tougher than both of us. She probably could handle leatherneck training. For more on Navy, let's go back to Lauren. Thanks, Frank. Actually, I know I could not because my brother joined the Marine Corps as an officer, and I heard way too many stories about how difficult it was. So thanks to all of them for what they go through to serve our country. Some would say a 3-8 and eight season for the Navy football team is forgettable. But as Sydney Sims reports, the midshipmen have good memories from this season. The Navy midshipmen seniors are getting ready to end their season. But before they do, they want to say thank you to those who have supported them the past four or five years at the Naval Academy. First, I, I thank God for just blessing me, uh, giving me the opportunity, I mean, uh, giving me the ability to, uh, to play this game. I thank my parents uh, and uh, my friends and family that supported me. Uh, I would like to thank my mom and my dad, uh, first and foremost. Without their like support and everything, I definitely wouldn't be where I am today. And then. Obviously, my brother and my sister have been huge to me as well. I'd like to give a thank you to my trainer, Matt. He's always taped me up, actually kept me from being in pieces, and always kept the mood light. It was always a joke, too, or two here and there before practice, and when I see him in the mornings for rehab, and he's, like, been, we become close friends now. So somebody that's been overlooked, but he's really kept me up over these four years. I'd like to thank my parents. Uh, they're the ones that, you know, put me through the school and all the training, football training, to get me here at this point. And uh, they haven't missed a game, uh, you know, whether that's in, been in Hawaii or anything. They haven't missed a game. They've always been there for me. And I would have to give another shout out to the guys that I've, you know, grown up with here now. Um, through these past four or five years, they're really the main reason I've stayed. Um, kept me through this place, through thick and thin. From Navy, with Inside Military Pigskin, this is Sydney Sims. Thanks, Sydney. After the break, we will wrap the season with our final at ease. That's next on Inside Military Pigskin. Here, I test my limits. Here, I find my purpose. Here, I attend a top-ranked school and am taught by the best. Here, I am part of something bigger than myself. Here, at the United States Naval Academy, we wear the Navy blue and gold. The United States Military Academy educates, trains, and inspires young men and women to become leaders of character, committed to the values of duty, honor, country, and there's so much more. Ranked among America's top schools, more than 35 majors, high-tech facilities, 
hands-on experiences, leadership, history, tradition. West Point, America's Academy. There's nothing average about the Air Force Academy or those who come here. It takes more than smarts and good grades. It takes grit. It's for the I never quit students, the relentless, persevering, most likely to keep trying until I reach my best students. Because we will go on to lead others, push boundaries, save lives, and represent American ideals. If you've got what it takes, prove it. What's the day like at the Academy? Get up. Get ready. Eat breakfast. Drill. Learn. Learn. Play. 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 Drill. Study. 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 Eat dinner. And study. Go to bed. Get up. Do it again. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? The U.S. Coast Guard Academy. Honor. Respect. Devotion to duty. Apply today. Welcome back, everyone, to Inside Military Picks in, presented by Navy Federal Credit Union, where our members are the mission. Frank Frangie, Ian Shields, pleasure to welcome Lauren Brooks up to the set for the final time. How you doing? I can't believe the season has gone so fast. I have enjoyed every single minute of this show. And I appreciate your story about your brother. I, I know that story, but I know how proud you are of the connection you have to the military and your family. That was a neat story. Absolutely, yes. I really appreciated that my brother went through all of that, and he became a scout sniper platoon commander, and then he was deployed to Afghanistan, and then Obviously, we've talked about my grandfather in the yeah. past, and uh, my grandfather served in the Navy, so shout out to him as well, 97 years old. That is awesome, sorry. All right, one more time. For the last time, what are you at ease about? I am at ease about Army's head coach, Jeff Munkin. There are going to be rumors that Jeff Munkin is going to leave Army for other programs. It's not going to happen. He already signed an extension. They're going to find a way to keep him. I'm at ease about Army keeping Jeff Munkin. Well done. Ian, for the last time, what are you at ease about? I'm at ease as, as Navy finishes the season about the forward progress they're making offensively. I think with Zach Aby, Malcolm Perry, they got some dynamic playmakers in the right places uh, to move the ball forward and put points on the board. So I'm at ease about them finishing their season strong. All right, I'm at ease about three guys for Air Force and why I like their season. They're five and seven. Cole Fagan was so good at that fullback position. Both Sanders and Hammond, the two quarterbacks, are both back. There is a young nucleus of, of athletic skill guys and that'll help Troy Calhoun move this thing forward. I like the season Air Force has had. Even more excited about the season they will have. That's what I'm at ease about. Folks, that is our program. Thank you so much for being part of it. It was an honor for all of us uh, to be able to provide this program uh, to hopefully some troops who got to watch this and, and think about your favorite team. So thank you for being part of it. It's been an honor and thanks to our friends at Navy Federal for making this possible for us. For Lauren Brooks and for Ian Shields, for the last time I'm Frank Frangie saying so long. Inside Military Pigskin was presented by Navy Federal Credit Union. At Navy Federal Credit Union, we have a mission to put members first by making their financial goals our priority. We proudly serve the Armed Forces, DOD, veterans, and their families. Confirm eligibility and join today. Our members are the mission, insured by NCUA.